Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. It's episode 45, we're in July 1947, and I think France has become the main enemy. In May, we had to deal with the French fighting us off Iceland. In June, we had repeated invitations to fight the French either in the Bay of Biscay or the Mediterranean. We declined the Bay of Biscay, we accepted the Mediterranean, but they declined the Mediterranean. But still, if we have a little look at the deployments of the fleets, you'll see that um, the Allies are now at seven fast battleships and battle cruisers, six carriers. Because we didn't battle last turn, I've been able to repair, and two of my battle cruisers have returned, but they've been able to repair as well. Oh, probably didn't think of that. 10 10 light carriers um, and a bunch of cruisers. Total blockade force has actually gone down to 260, whereas mine has gone up to 270, but it's not gone up as much as I thought it, it would do. In the Mediterranean, they've increased the number of light cruisers, but taken away a heavy cruiser. Um, small adjustments uh, over here in the um, Atlantic West. And in Africa, they've sent a couple of battle cruisers and a heavy cruiser. Now, I wonder if they are sending them towards Japan. You'll remember that Britain was only fighting Japan with two or three corvettes. Well, now they have a light carrier and a couple of cruisers. Not a breathtaking force. And I see that the Japanese have moved in to Southeast Asia with a modest force of their own. So perhaps a more active Japan will increase the French in particular, to deploy more and take some of the pressure off me in future months. That at least is the hope. Let's have a look at where we are right now. Yeah, just to confirm that, in uh, Southeast Asia, Japan has a heavy cruiser, two lights, a carrier, and three light carriers and 21 destroyers. So they are overmatching the British with a heavy cruiser and a light carrier. And of course, Corvettes. And the French have one heavy cruiser. So, yeah, not too much. Okay. We are 2000 in the red, only constructing these teeny tiny little uh, trawler minesweepers just to round out that force. I'm hoping that when they're done, uh, a couple more months, that will mean that the only construction we have going are submarines. We're building four submarines uh, a turn at the moment. We've had a bit of heavy losses over the last two months. We're losing five, so I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Hopefully that will even itself out. And everything else is, I think, pretty good. So let's press the turn. Ah, we need some officers. So let's me sort that one out. So uh, last turn, there was a series of promotions, including obviously the third light cruiser division, which is the one uh, out in the Mediterranean. So I am thinking, looking that we have a certain Captain Susie Dunitz. He'll never amount to anything, but he's above average and he's well connected. So let's appoint him and close that. And then that should be fine. Oh, OK, there must be some ships as well. Let me have a look. Okay, we have spaces for the uh, München and also for the Vondertan. So let's see what we can get for them. So the only above average is uh, a speed enthusiast, so he's probably going to thrash the engines and poor ship handling. I think that's the limit of his uh, characteristics. Yeah, so that's a real, you know, downer on a captain, particularly on a... Uh, an important ship like the um, on the turn. Uh, usually it's the last in the division, but still. Uh, so we'll do Captain Susie's check. And then for the Munchen, we'll sign a commander. Oops. This one rather. And now, sadly, we only have Rollman here, who is 
his average and an aviator. I guess he would receive command of a light carrier, but we haven't got one. So, or of an AV, but we haven't got one of them either. So let's give him some valuable command experience and give him the munchen to play with. Right, now let's go. And off in the Bay of Dis Biscay. So again, we'll, we'll look at the details, but I'm not minded to uh, want to go that far south. However, sorry, I was just thinking aloud, <laughs> as you do. If it were a convoy attack, I rejected one last month, but that wasn't too bad. But it says here, all my battlecruisers will be facing four battlecruisers and um, battleships. With only one carrier? Is that true? No, actually, we're seeing two carriers. Oh, sorry. Their forces, estimated and expected. So, three light carriers and cruisers. Now, hmm. I mean, it's tempting. Locate and attack the convoy and sink at least six merchant ships. Now, the good thing is these things, you know, they don't expect you to go through the day and they're a little bit vague about how on earth you'll ever get home. The bad thing is um, the loss of destroyers because of the range. Right. So this, this is much more a thing. Right off the coast of Norway. Yes, please. Let's, um, let's have one of those. Phew. Well, I'm glad I declined that because to have wandered in there and then had 15 destroyers not turn up or something would have been interesting. So estimated forces in the area, four battle cruisers, three heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, two carriers, five light carriers. Expected, I'm sorry, it says one battleship, 10 battle cruisers. Well, there aren't 10 battle cruisers in operation, so I don't know. I think that's a lot to go by. So interestingly, it's giving aircraft from France and from Iceland, which again implies that we are up against Marine Nationale rather than from uh, the Royal Navy. So let's just check us. So all our battle cruisers, the first heavy cruisers, the second heavy cruisers, the first carrier. Destroyers and light cruisers, the second carrier. Okay, so yeah, it's the full fleet. So I'm, I said I'm going to accept this. Well, in fact, I have to accept this. So all right, I'll accept it. Some various minefields in some strange locations that are hard to visualize. And off we go. Uh, attack the enemy ships. Thank you. A bit of a suboptimal arrangement in that they're all in one force. I don't really like that. The battle cruisers are the main force, so I don't like that either. The carriers are here. Let's put them under. Let's not put them under manual control. And also over here in weird flanking positions. Uh, worse than that is the sea state limit speed. So up here, it is going east southeast in direction. Speed limited to 28 knots. Okay, that's that's not too bad. If it keeps on like that, the wind is a fresh breeze, so the that shouldn't bother um, air operations too much. The sighting range is 26 and a half thousand yards. The weather is cloudy, which of course is never great for spotting. So uh, yeah. Hopefully, that will um, all be fine. Um, I guess the good news is if if the sea state is limited to 28 knots, that may put a dampener on the ability of the enemy carriers from running away. Because uh, it doesn't really disadvantage us. Let me just put up my uh, pre-battle checklist to make sure I don't do the usual forgetting of things. So, time of day. It is night. Dawn will be uh, soon. In one hour and 35 minutes, dawn will be at 1.49 Zulu. And it's, yeah, nine minutes 
past midnight. That is what northern <laughs> climbs can do. Um, okay, so that could be awkward. So I want these carriers to come under manual control as soon as I possibly can and turn them away from whatever we're heading to because I don't like their position at the moment one little bit. Battle length, 800 minutes. Mm. Visibility, as I mentioned, 20, well, it's night time, so 4,000 yards. There's speed limit of 28 knots, no air restrictions. Let's zoom out to see where we are. Well, wow, we are right off the coast of Norway, so super close to both Bergen and Stravanger, and also with uh, Trondheim, not too far away either. Obviously, if the British don't come to the aid of the French, then the nearest French bases are what we call a long way away, <laughs> down, down here at the other end of the North Sea. So yeah, this is the uh, land of the midnight sun coming along quite nicely. So that's great. And also, you, as you can see, a whole pile of little uh, minefields, which I trust are ours. So that's nice. But the game speed to ultra fast. The order of battle we've already had a look at. It's basically the whole fleet, but deployed in a rather strange group. I didn't really realize that. I didn't pick that up when I was looking at the battle generator. I might have moved the, um, the flagship. Now here's something I don't normally do. In the main force, if you right click on it, there's this status option and there is change lead division. And it says change lead division. This can only be done once during a game. Well, actually, I can't, I can't remember the last time I actually did it, but anyhow, let's say yes. No eligible divisions in force. Okay, so it was expecting, if I wanted to change it from the battleships that is currently the flagship to do another division that was also battleships. Boo. I don't think that's very good. <laughs> so, stuck with that. Uh, battle objective. Inflict more damage. Okay. Easy peasy. Uh, set the scouting and air scouting. Hmm. So let's go back to here and let's do our scouting and just edit this down a bit. So I'm going to do a night search out to 250 nautical miles. Uh, let's make it two phase, medium cap, night cap. I'm not too worried about this bit because air from Trondheim and Bergen will be all over that kind of thing. So I think the enemy is in that kind of quadrant. So let's okay that. And if I zoom in to the carriers, um, okay, it's the same pattern. They can argue it between themselves. Okay, create a battle plan. Well, I think that's problematic until I know where and what I am facing. So that will be uh, to be organized. Let's instead organize some strikes so that I'm all over them when uh, they finally ready themselves. And I'm so there are two tactics here I could do. One is to organize just a little couple of micro strikes just to try and identify where the enemy is so that um, I can pinpoint them with these small strikes and then hit them big. But because it's nighttime and dusk uh, or dawn really soon, my hunch is that locating them is going to be pretty quick and therefore I want to absolutely smash them with an airstrike as soon as I possibly can. So I think I'm going to go for the big one this time. So here's a potential strike. Let's go with readying that lot. And then if we go to flug number two and auto strike that and also ready them. Just, yep. So, okay. 
that feels like as much as I can do. I'm just going to advance it a minute and see if that will let me take off the carriers from uh, AI control. No. <laughs> That's a shame. Okay, let's rearrange this. I mean, it is bizarre that uh, Flug One is out of sight of the flagship and switches to AI control when, you know, the flagship's radar is much, much further away than either the first lot of carriers or the second lot of carriers. Who knew they needed to uh, see each other so very much? Okay, so we've got some recons taking off, which is all good. They're turning away, which I like. Um, with the uh, weather coming uh, from the north east, northwest even, then I'm happy for the carriers to be turning away a bit. And lots of recons taking off from lots of air bases everywhere. So hopefully this will all prove to be very exciting. <laughs> Don't you hate nighttime battles when uh, it's all a bit squeaky? When when you're mal deployed, nice to see the carriers turning away from their advanced position. Proceed in five minute increments. Here come the strikes. It's all good. It's really the reports I'm after. At least we haven't bumped into anybody. Uh, I was going to say, at least we haven't bumped into anybody immediately. And lo, three battle cruisers, two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and three destroyers reported. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's just see what we've got going on around here. So, down here we have the carriers. Still want to be on independent control. I might just change that to well. I'll keep it on independent because I still like them to uh, carry on going away a little bit. And because when I get them to turn for aircraft, they're going to go in this northwesterly direction into the wind which obviously is going to take them to this report. Let's chunk this up to say 25 knots. I wonder if the cruisers, oh, they can come off. Okay. So they're on a scout mission. And down here, we have the other heavy cruisers and they are on a scout mission too. So let's just see how they shake themselves out. A little bit and see if this little report hmm, let's go minute by minute shall we right so we've been spotted by enemy aircraft okay <laughs> hey where have they come from hmm now it's only lean and one which is the battle cruisers which is okay. Right. Seems to me time to launch at least one of the strikes. So I think I'm going to go for Fluke 2. We um, select the ready ones. I'm going to absolutely coordinate them. I am going to go for... Hmm, tempted to go for BBs because, you know, that's what has been reported and everything but obviously if there's a carrier there and then go for this report i mean they are very close very 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 close so let's launch them oh. select ready launch uh yeah that's all fine you go. So that was Fluke 1. And yeah, let's just wait till we get a second report. I'm particularly interested in whether there's going to be any K 
carrier nonsense. I might just pile this up to what's my max? 29. Yeah. So actually, it's 28, isn't it? The C state is 28. And yep, still 28. So, oak. Oh, oh, that's plain. Just a um, patrol bomber. Hasn't reported anything else. There's just that one report. I would expect to be seeing something. Ah, like little green dots. Yeah, that's what I expect to be seeing. Um, resolving into more stuff. Obviously, I'm going to take these identifications of light and heavy cruisers with a monumental pinch of salt. Okay, well, we started shooting, which is promising. So I'm going to pause and plan. Let me just pop out a little bit more. So the plan obviously is to, you know, keep these bunnies out of the way. Um, they may want to go north for the launching of the planes and stuff, but hopefully they won't. If they start going north, I might set a patrol mission to try and fix them in place. Meanwhile, I want my uh, battle cruisers to go in that direction. Now, in order to get between the carriers and these bad boys. Now, if the carriers hadn't been so ridiculously close in the same formation, I might well have wanted to go in this kind of uh, direction so that I would sandwich these guys between the Norwegian coast, which is just off the map here, and me. But I can't do that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to maximize a bit of shielding. That's the plan. Let me just sort out all of these various bits and bobs into battle formations. So I'm going to take them off scouting and screening and put them into line ahead and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so I've put the second and third line divisions, the heavy cruisers, to be cores with the first, with the battle cruisers. My thinking is that however many of battle cruisers reportedly three could be four uh, they're going to be the battle cruisers will shoot onto battle cruisers leaving the heavy cruisers trailing behind to take helpful pot shots along the way at least that's the plan i've left i put one destroyer division onto support and line ahead i've left the rest and the light cruisers on screening because i don't really know if um there is a carrier around and whether, you know, a bit of anti-aircraft screening might be a thing. I might just also bring in the old request land-based cap over the division because that's so ridiculously close. So that's where we're up to just now. Obviously, this distance isn't very far. I mean, these this visibility line is only 4,000. That is the max visibility, isn't it? Yep. So, um, yeah, so we're easily within gun distance and say this cruiser from uh, the battle cruisers is only 20,000 yards. So I'm going to let them turn and straighten out and then I'm going to look at what kind of gunnery we are getting. Now you see reports to CVs there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be great, obviously, but the salt and the pinch must be taken together. At least they're turning away in an agreeable direction. They are reportedly 16,000 yards away. And I'm just going to monitor the range. So just under 16,000 yards. Okay, so that's all good. I'm just going to turn the course a little bit more northerly, and I'm he's sending down some cruisers, so I'm going to perhaps unleash some of the cruisers, take them under my control, and uh, see what's going to happen to them. Okay, the light cruisers over here are outside sighting range, and can't possibly be under any control, so I'm going to have to wait to command them. So I've taken this destroyer screening uh, formation and told that to go to line ahead and independent. 
if we zoom out, the carriers are not in a thrilling place. So I'm just going to fix them a little bit. I can find the lead carrier. There it is. No, no. And I'm going to tell that to patrol. And hopefully that will stop it from getting any funny ideas about where to go. I'm going to do that here too. Um, I mean, they're so dead close that I don't really have to worry. Uh, the big news, I mean, the really big news is I've reportedly hit a carrier with a 15-inch uh, gun. I mean, you know, obviously the carrier could resolve itself into being a destroyer or anything really, but uh, like BB, I mean, that's so easy to miss. But okay, uh, I've hit with another one. So let's just check on the all important um, hit rates. So we are coming in at just over two and a half, um, three for the Ragsgraf. It was the Ragsgraf that hit it. The Stauffenburg doesn't seem to have a target present at the moment, but that's okay. We are all restricted to 28 knots, so that's important to keep in mind. Shame the carrier is a battleship, because obviously battleships are much harder to, um, to do. Right, so that's the uh, Prince Eugen and everything. And um, obviously they've been told to be core and follow the Scharnhor, so they're going 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Well done, chaps. Let's hope they uh, get with the program soon. Can't see where the light cruisers are. There, hiding behind that one. Okay, they are now okay to be taken over. And as long as they go approximately the same kind of direction as uh, everyone else, just set that to 28 knots. Oops. And send that all north and hope they will get themselves sorted out. Uh, so obviously still reported as heavy cruisers, heavy cruiser, the carrier that was reported as uh, mysteriously, oh, that didn't last long, mysteriously um, become a, uh, oh, something else. Who knows? Wow. So uh, yeah, this could all be very hard to coordinate. Uh, you know, guys, this, you know, Frederick, this is, this is 1947. You know, walkie-talkie radio, voice radio-y thing. I should be able to control my fleet a lot better than this. So these guys, they're only at 7,000 yards. So I guess that is, yeah, well within torpedo range. If that's torpedo range, what actually? Oh, that's my sighting range. So the gray is sighting. So it's tricky. I almost want to... Um, steer into them because I don't want their rubbishy torpedoes to be coming my way. So yeah, I'm going to chase them directly. Now these, they all look like dis destroyers to me. Now of course, Here's that strike all going off in that direction when they're over here. It is cloudy and it is uh, well, night. So hopefully, but well, they can do night attack. So hopefully they, their radars and stuff are going to find things. So an actual sighting of an actual cruiser and it's actually on fire. So that's nice. Just check where these chaps are. So they're now from my flagship. They're 26 miles and 22 and a half miles. Okay, not thrilled with that, but it doesn't seem too awful. And I seem to be having a bit of success 
with this whole chasing them down with various hits coming along. So I'm happy with that. Still don't know what any of this stuff actually is. So let's take the destroyers and send them in that kind of direction. Let's take the battle cruisers and come along the stern. Uh, oh, interestingly, that's resolved itself as a Frenchie rather than a Brit. Obviously, it's exciting. Oops. We'll be fine. Wow. <laughs> I think we hit something there. I mean, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm not sure how you get twenty fifteen inch gun hits from the Stauffenburg, but it didn't like that at all. So Let's just see what's happening here. Not enjoying the torpedo hit, but it says it can make 25. So, yeah, let's bring that round. Let's bring these round. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Still says we're hitting CVs. I still don't think there are any. But we are certainly mixing it about. And yep, one of the destroyers takes a hit. Can we bring the Shan horse? No. So all of this is completely out of control. Really, the only things we can control are our battle cruisers. Max that, yeah, we can only do 25 knots. So if they want to run away, they will run away. Oops. Yeah. I'm being, um, let's just say very aggressive, shall we? Someone's hit a torpedo. Uh, I'm going to go down to the south. Oh, so many torpedoes. I mean, you know, knife, knife fights. Okay. What can you do? I mean, ah, please, please really be a carrier. Let's just chase you down and see what we are really fighting against. Stauffenburg is doing excellent hits. Nice to see the Scharnhorst and the Blücher joining in wherever on earth they are. Oh, okay, so there's the Scharnhorst. I mean, it's a long way away. Yeah, they can fire their radar guns that far, but they, they can't come under flag control. I mean, all the battle cruisers are now uh, out of control. So, magazine hits CL. All right. Very hard to uh, parse the uh, sentence there, but obviously happy with that. 
Oh, oh, come on. Are we really saying that is a uh, French battlecruiser that we are at absolute point blank range? Uh, 857 yards. Is that a record without actually hitting it? Weirdly, we don't seem to be hitting it very much, despite the fact that it's now 1,500 yards away. Ah, um, so yeah, there's some hits from Von der Tern, thank you very much, and from Stauffenburg, thank you very much as well. Yep, piling in there on the Dunkirk. Right, let's just zoom out, at least we, oh, and Dusk is, um, sorry, Dawn is approaching. They seem to be keeping out of the way sufficiently. Let's go and have a look and see if we can launch any meaningful airstrikes. I'm going to take the squadron filter up to three, so no for the first flug. Second flug, yes. So let's auto select a strike. Is that all? Doesn't seem very many. Why, why so few? Ah, because we've already got a lot ready. Ugh. Okay. Let's undo those. Let's select uh, select the ready. And then let's just zoom out and go to a location. And the location is about maybe here. I'm, I haven't seen any cap. I'm not going to coordinate it. The, the, the difference is 2.30 in the morning or well past uh, nearly quarter to five so that's way too long um so yes let's not be doing that and it is actually right now 145 so it'll take 45 minutes to get the strikes up and down there so let's just i don't know come to sort of almost here well probably yeah whatever and launch strikes yep that's fine no, I don't. No, I don't. And still, no, I don't. And no, don't, don't keep asking. And exit. So, yes, they will go in pell mell, but that's fine. So, let's bring the Stauffenburg round. Yep, piling into the uh, Rod Dunkirk. There is a uh, refreshing dawn coming around, and hopefully that will bring some of our boys under some sort of control. Not sure why Stauffenburg isn't turning when I say please turn. Oh. So. Okay, it's only got one turret. X is jammed. Y is disabled. Conning tower critical hit. A, yeah, okay. Hopefully they'll get that stuff organized soon. There's the ranks graph over here. Still not in AI control. Uh, stuff over here. Okay, at least they're shooting at the uh, Anderson top. Oh, oh yes, it did hit. I thought they would missed. And now the graft and another torpedo and another. Well done, guys. So yeah, um, uh, actual CVs. So what have we got? What can we say? <laughs> What can we retrieve from this terrible mess in terms of any kind of coordination? Okay, we can bring the ranks graph under control. Its maximum speed seems to be 19. Okay. Uh, over here we have the dang zig. Let's bring that over. Con oh no, sorry, that's a um, make that support and line ahead and bring that this way. There's the Bremen all on its own for some reason. Let's make that and send that this way. Hopefully the other cruisers will join it. Uh, this lot. 
We'd very much like you to go that way. So these are odds and sods. I would like, nope, still out of control there. Uh, and the Shana. So at least Division 2 is following Division, sorry, Division 3 is following Division 2. So I mean, at least that's something. And they're heading in roughly the right direction. I don't know where the Graf Spey has gone. Has anyone seen the Graf Spey? Let's go to the order of battle. Graf Spey. Center on the map. I was right there, about to um, nearly collide with um, with the poor old Dunkirk. In fact, let's go right in front of it. Yeah, well, so that's that's a goner, and in fact, they've given up firing on it, so that's nice. So yeah, let's bring these boys round. Let's bring him round, and. As soon as we can with the Scharnhorst. Nope, not yet. Try and bring the uh, <coughs> the heavy cruisers. Okay, nothing like a random torpedo. This one looking like it's come from the um, Peter Peterstrasse, which is lovely. Well done. So I mean, I don't want to you know get overexcited too quickly. <laughs> I mean, I will do, but, you know, this could be the battle that I have been hoping for. We've certainly destroyed one battle cruiser, blown up. Uh, looks like a, yep, a second is sinking. Hooray. I would love to pick off a third. That would be amazing. What we're looking at here is two more Dunkirks. I mean, Probably need to be a little bit more circumspect, but I'm not seeing any carriers, and I have carriers, and by God, they've got to come and hit something soon. It's only two o'clock, so it's going to be a little while before the aeroplanes, another half hour or something, before the aeroplanes come and attack it. Uh, there's a Jean d'Arc. Um, we don't know what that is. Uh, so, yeah, some just nice 18-inch gun heavy cruisers. Uh, Algier is usually a heavy cruiser as well. Yep. Oops. Light cruiser. So, hmm. Okay. This is this is despite, you know, taking a bit of torpedo damage and taking terrible risks. I mean, really shocking. I should be ashamed of myself, but this this is shaping up okay. My only disadvantage is I'm stuck to 25 knots, but that's okay. We are some 11,000 yards away from them. I should probably just straighten up to the southeast in order, in order to clear my arcs of fire for the Von der Turn. And the Graf Spey has come back into line. The Reichsgraf can only do 19 knots at the moment. Let's just see how that's doing. I mean, it seems fine. Flotation one, we can manage that. I assume the Graf Spey, yep, that's okay. Uh, as well. So they're all good. So the French are trying to turn south. So again, open up my arcs because if I have a look here at the division, I go, oh, well, I mean, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> 8.5 for the Stauffenberg and 10% hit chance for the Van der Tern. Um, the Graf Spey at a much more normal three and three quarters. So yeah, I mean, that's that shooting range. Uh, oh, let's be charitable. Uh, yep, yep. So uh, again, masses of hits. Now these are only five inch, more five inches, 15 inches. Yeah, we're much more interested in 15 inches than five inches. So let's plow into that. And again, plastering with 16 inches from Graf Spey, Bragg's Graf. They're all, they're all, I mean, yes, they're hitting with five inch guns as well. But um, yeah, I mean, none of that has got to be, says light damage. But we know what, we know what these damage assessments really look like. I'm going to take the Bragg's Graf 
and head that south as well. It, it will slowly lose contact if I zoom out. Ah, here's the Scharnhorst. So, nope, still under AI control. Um, whatever, I think. So these are all, uh, let's just put them under AI control. Okay. Oops, that's not long for this world and is sinking, but that's fine. Particularly if it's distracting the French cruisers and destroyers, not that there are many of them, from uh, doing anything with me. Okay. So ideally, I would like to straighten up um, and head south. But I don't want the French to head south because that heads towards my carriers and I don't want them to do that. So let's just keep on doing that and see who blinks first. 